I marvel at our generation because our generation lives as if it's the only generation that has ever lived. I marvel at that. I marvel at the arrogant spirit that comes forth from the average American where they feel like that they are entitled to everything. They should make no sacrifices, that everything should be laid at their feet and that they are the greatest thing that has ever lived on the face of the earth. I marvel at that attitude. I marvel at that selfish, self-centered uh, attitude of the average American. Now, am I right? Is that the average American? Do they? And when you preach to them, they feel like that, uh, that you have no right to tell them what to do. That they are so great and so wonderful that they can make their own choices simply. Why? Because I'm an American. That's why. Well, I've got news for Americans. God loves Japanese just as much as He loves Americans. He loves Africans as much as He does American. He loves the Portuguese. He loves the Italian. He loves the Spaniard, the Russian. It makes no difference to Him. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. God is not impressed with America. Make no mistake about it. He is not impressed with America. I'm a native-born American. I know a little bit about this country. And I know a little bit about the spirit of the people who live here. Americans, for the most part, are hardworking people. Or you wouldn't have the kind of country that you've got. They're hardworking people. But this generation of all generations feels entitled. They feel like that when I say, what do you mean by entitled? They feel like that they have a right for all of the wealth, all of the riches, all of the blessings, everything there is, they feel entitled to it. And it doesn't stop with just the people. It goes into the church. The church feels that way. Don't trample on my rights. Don't dare preach to me and tell me that I'm a sinner. Because I'm just like everybody else. I have a right to do this. Rights of the people. Over the rights of God. So the book of Revelation helps us locate where we are historically, geographically, and prophetically. For the book of Revelation helps us understand where we're headed. Because I can read Revelation and I realize by reading this book that what he said 2,000 years ago is coming together. In the 17th chapter of the book of Revelation, a woman is seen riding a beast. That woman that rides that beast becomes very prominent in the book of Revelation. The reason she is prominent is because she plays a very important role in the coming of the Lord Jesus right before His advent. You should be aware of that tonight. If you don't know anything else, you need to know what I'm about to tell you. You need to be warned about what I'm going to tell you in just a moment. You need to understand that this is not a cheap thing. That we're not here tonight to try to give you a bunch of, a bunch of, a bunch of moral platitudes to, to kind of teach you how to live and how to think about yourself. You get plenty of that on TV. We're not here tonight to give you some kind of a trumped up prosperity gospel where it teaches you how to feed that greed, I mean, time and time again. All you got to do is tune in TV and you'll get all kinds of prosperity pimps dishing it out to you day in and day out. That's not what we're here for. We're here tonight to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and the whole counsel of God. And that is the word of the living God. But in Revelation chapter number 17, it says a woman rides the beast. Who is this woman that rides the beast? Drunken with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus Christ. For 2,000 years, she has shed the blood of the saints of God, of Christians. Christians. Who is this woman? If we can identify this woman, we can identify the religious system in America, and we can identify the situation as it is right before the second advent of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. If we can do that. But you will not hear your nationwide evangelist ever identify her. You'll never hear, you'll never hear the talk show host. You'll never hear these guys on there who have their healing lines. You'll never hear them. You'll never hear them. Forget it. You'll turn blue in the face before you ever hear them. Why? Because they're blind leaders of the blind. I'm not trying to get all over TV. I just want to preach the truth. I'm a pastor of a local church. We just happen to video these services and put them on TV. That's what it's about. It's about preaching the truth. So who is she? Well, let me read to you from Dave Hunt's excellent book. Outstanding book, A Woman Rides the Beast. Let him identify her for you. Rather still, let a cardinal... Why do they call themselves cardinal? They call themselves cardinal from the Latin word cardo, which means the keeper of the door, the holder of the keys. In plain words, a cardinal is a man who says, I hold the keys to the kingdom of heaven. We're going to quote one of their cardinals. His name is Alphonsus de Liguri, the glories of Mary. 
And here's what happens after 2,000 years of degeneration into religious perversion. Quote, sinners receive pardon by Mary alone. He falls and is lost who has not recourse to Mary. Mary is called the gate of heaven because no one can enter that blessed kingdom without passing through her. The way of salvation is open to none otherwise than through Mary. The salvation of all depends on their being favored and protected by Mary. He who is protected by Mary will be saved. He who is not will be lost. Our salvation depends on thee. God will not save us without the intercession of Mary. Who would receive any grace were it not for thee, O Mother of God? Now this came from the mouth of one of their cardinals. You say they're just other Christians, preacher. No, they're not. No, they're not. No, they're not. You say they're our brothers and sisters in Christ, preacher. No, they're not. The walking apocrypha quotes from all the time. This is the apostasy of the last days. This is the preparation for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you straight. I'm telling you the way it is. This country has been deceived. And the Catholic Church is growing by leaps and bounds. How do you know? Look about you. Look in Knoxville, Tennessee. Look what's happening. Who's building the hospitals? Who's buying up the hospitals? Who's buying up everything in this town? It is them, folks. No personal hatred for these people. One of the best friends I ever had in my life was a Roman Catholic. But the truth of the matter is, what's more important? The truth of your soul and where you're going to spend eternity or personal friendship. Would you not want someone to tell you the truth if you're in darkness? Would you not want someone to come to you and tell you the truth if you are in darkness? You would. And the problem is nobody will anymore. They're mum. They're closed. Mouths. Nobody says anything. Blind leaders of the blind. I'm telling you, I'm making a lot of people mad tonight, but I'm going to tell you the Pray truth. It, <laughs> the truth has a way of invigorating you, though. It lightens you up. It, it stirs you up. Amen. Lest you think it's all about the Catholics. It's not. I like religious freedom, don't you? I like religious freedom. In Providence, Rhode Island, they had religious freedom. Religious freedom's leaving in America, though. It's quickly going out the door. Where's it headed? It went out the way with political correctness. When you can no longer preach the truth for fear of being branded a bigot or a racist or whatever. You can't preach the truth because it's not acceptable in the ears of these sweet ears. And you know these people in this country who get offended with everything? They're offended. Can you believe a bunch of people who watch fornication day in and day out? Bed hop from one place to the next. Shoot up dope day in and day out. Some of the filthiest mouth people ever walk the face of the earth get offended? I marvel at that, don't you? They don't know what offended is. Political correctness is mind rot. But what it's done is taken its toll on the church. Because people are afraid to, afraid to preach anything because they're afraid that they're going to offend somebody. You see, we are where we are tonight because we have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That's been the hallmark for 2,000 years. That and that alone. We know whom we have believed. Persuaded he's able to keep that which he committed to him against that day. Personal salvation is the most discriminatory thing on the face of the earth. You're either saved or you're not saved. Political correctness hates that. It hates absolutes. It hates somebody to stand up and say, I'm saved. I know I'm going to heaven. And you can't do a thing about it. And political correctness shouts back at you, you're offensive. You're a bigot. And you're brainwashed. America, therefore, is a country that is interested in one thing, pleasure. It's hedonism. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. The religion of America is a convenient religion. As long as it feels good and makes you feel good, it'll be okay in this country. It'll prosper. You'll fill up, you'll fill up professional basketball stadiums like they have in Houston. When you get up weekly and give them a feel-good message about yourself. Here's the problem. Feel-good messages about yourself do not relate to a right relationship with God. Admitting who you are does. That'll make a difference. If this Bible is true, and how many believe it's true? Churches in this country 
are in grave danger. They are in grave danger. God holds your destiny. And your destiny is wound up in one person, Jesus Christ. Your hope of eternity and your hope of the future is in one person, Jesus Christ. He has a remnant. He has believers. Don't get the Elijah syndrome. He'll always have reserved to himself tens of thousands who love him dearly. And they're everywhere. Amen. Amen. Now, your government may come to the point when it defines Christianity. Right. It may come to the point when it tells you what is and what is not the true faith of Christ. It's got to come. In order for the world to receive the mark of the beast, it's got to come. It's got to come. And how are they going to do it? Well, they're going to do it, first of all, by watering the church down where there's nothing left in the church, so there'll be no problem in the church. They'll do it by controlling the economic system. I think sometimes things that happen are nothing more, more than feelers put out. To see how much effect it's going to have. I wonder sometimes about that. A private corporation controls the money supply in this country. You know that. The Federal Reserve Board is neither federal nor its reserve. It is a private corporation for profit. They control how much money is on the market. That's quite a remarkable thing, don't you think? And controlling the money, controlling the interest rates and all of that has a direct effect on your pocketbook. Whether you can buy or sell, unless you receive the mark of the beast. We are being trained. We are being, we are being brainwashed. We are being prepared to be manipulated when it comes to that time. We're being prepared. Don't you see it? Every transaction you make practically is electronic. Even if you pay with cash, there's an electronic transaction involved in it. And these electronic transactions can speed across the globe. Everything is electronic anymore and there's electronic signature attached to you. Big Brother wants to watch where you're going. He's watching your move. He's listening to you. Not that I want people to break the law. Not that I want people to kill people. But I don't like Big Brother watching every move I make. It's none of his business. Just because you got elected into government doesn't mean you're God. And you look down upon somebody and watch every move they make. Who appointed them as God? There is an inalienable right, God-given right, that there's a certain amount of freedom you have that is not to be touched, not to be breached, a line you don't cross. And when you put cameras all over town and start watching every move that people make, you've crossed the line. But they're conditioning you. They're getting you ready. They're getting you ready to monitor every move you make, everywhere you go, every dime you spend, everything you buy, everything you believe, everything that comes into you. The internet is the next big battleground because they'll fight over the internet next because the internet is the one place that disseminates different ideas different news the internet so far has been free but they'll put clamps on it next mark it down how they're going to do it they're going to do it by protecting your children from predators from the ones who are coming after your kids the ones who meet your kids on the web on the world wide web they'll come after they'll do it that way they'll always use a good motive to take the freedoms away if it wasn't for the internet there'd be people in the world that never get the truth of the news you certainly don't believe what you get from the controlled news media you'd better filter it and filter it strongly amen what else needs to be done it's just a matter now of all the things coming together and it'll be here it'll be here there's one good thing about it though thank god we won't be here I hear the prophets in the charismatic movement. They're all the time talking about what a great revival God's going to bring and how the kingdom, God's going to build his kingdom on this earth. And we're going to raise this up. And we're going to raise that up. And we're going to do this. And we're going to do that. I say hogwash. You don't know what you're talking about. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. That's what's coming. And that's where we are now. And it's right around, around the corner at the door. Are you ready? Do you believe for one minute? The government cares if you live or die. So the next time they come out with something that takes your freedoms away to protect your health, watch it closely.